For three million Americans, going gluten-free is more than a lifestyle choice. It's a medical need because celiac disease can be a serious illness. About 28 years ago, I started having constant diarrhea. I had migraines, chronic fatigue, bloating, and tingling in my fingers and toes. I went to the doctors, and medication for the symptoms seemed to help for a while. Then I got pregnant. My GI symptoms came back. My baby was stillborn. I had three miscarriages. When I got pregnant with my daughter, Linnea, I was on bed rest and then had an emergency C-section. When she was born, she weighed only two pounds, and at five foot nine, I weighed only 105 pounds. As she grew stronger, I grew weaker, and I needed answers. Alice joins us today, along with Dr. Frieda Lewis Hall, the Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer, to talk about celiac disease. Welcome to you both. Thank you, thank you. And Alice, I'm gonna start with you, and just ask how you ultimately got the diagnosis. I was telling a friend of mine what I was going through. She's a veterinarian, and she mentioned that sometimes animals have trouble with their grains and that I should get tested for celiac. So what is celiac disease? It's an autoimmune disease that gets triggered when people eat the gluten protein. And that's found in wheat and barley and rye. So you can imagine that's found in a lot of common foods like pizza and bread and cookies and in cakes and in pasta. But it's also found in really unexpected places like lip balm, lipstick, in skin and hair products, in toothpaste, and even in vitamin and nutrition supplements. Yeah, and people don't always think about that. When a person with celiac disease comes into contact with gluten, their immune system reacts abnormally to it, leading to damage, for instance, in the intestines. Nutrients also can have a harder time getting absorbed, which is one of the reasons why Alice maybe was losing weight in this scenario. Yep, and Alice explained a lot of the symptoms that people experience when they have celiac disease, but people who have this disorder can also experience things like anemia and a blistery skin rash. They can have damage to their dental enamel, problems with balance, cognitive impairment, and in addition to that can have a lot of severe joint pain and acid reflux and heartburn. And we have come a long way. Celiac can be confirmed through a blood test and Alice, I want to ask you what happened when you talked to your doctor about getting tested before you were originally diagnosed. At first, my doctor didn't want to test me. He said I was too tall, but that was 20 years ago. So that sounds odd, right, that she's too tall to have a disease. But it used to be that they thought that celiac disease always showed up in children and then stunted their growth. But we now know more. We know that it can show up at any age, and we know that some people don't even have symptoms at all. All that said, Still, four out of five people who have this disorder are misdiagnosed or undiagnosed. So I think I can predict, Alice, what happened after you got the test. <laughs> <laughs> well, it came back positive, and I have to say, I was so relieved when I finally knew what was wrong with me. And then once you found out, how have you managed over the years this condition? I went on a gluten-free diet, and I had to change the way I eat. I feel better, but I still live in fear of food, and that's why I founded an organization that advances research in celiac disease. And people with celiac really should ask their healthcare provider to refer them to a dietitian who can help teach them how to avoid gluten while also following a healthy diet. The cause of celiac disease still isn't known, but research suggests there is a genetic component. Other risk factors can include having an autoimmune disease, such as type 1 diabetes or lupus, as an example. And women with unexplained infertility problems are six times more likely to have celiac disease. But remember, this can happen to men, it can happen to women, and it can happen to people of all ages. You know, this is a disease that has a lot of uh, myths about it and a lot of misconceptions and, frankly, even a little bit of mystery. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that we don't know, but there's a lot that we do know. And so for more information, people can go to GetHealthyStayHealthy.com. Alice, thanks for sharing your story. We appreciate it. Dr. Fury, we also appreciate you. And certainly, if you think you may be at risk, ask your health care provider to be screened. We'll be right back.